The race to bring new electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft into commercial service is getting tighter. Startup companies are rushing to get a financial return for their investors, but that's not going to happen until the aircraft achieve the full blessing of aviation safety regulators. The designs are all new. Most of the technology is very new. So why is it that some of the newcomers think they will be able to get approval faster than long-established aerospace companies do with their aircraft? Industry expert Sergio Chikuta has been watching the situation closely. He's with SMG Consulting, which works with companies across the aerospace, defense, automotive, and tech sectors. He talked us through how he sees this playing out. So when it comes to Evito, um, the most important thing for an OEM is to enge engage early with the specific regulator. Um, so to give an example from, from call it big aerospace, uh, Boeing, for example, started engaging the FAA many, many years on composites before the 787 was rolled out of at their first flight. And, and the idea is that every time there is a novel technology, you are teaching the regulator, and at the same time, the regulator needs to uh, look and consider your design. Um, normally, the steps are you are going to open a cert project, and then you're going to go through a certain number of steps that will lead you to a type certificate. Approval for any new aircraft involves several stages, each with their own hurdles to overcome. So type certification means the approval of the design of a specific aircraft and all its component parts. So its motors, its propellers, avionics, flight controls. And basically what it does is the regulator that wants to make sure that this product or this operation meets their safety expectation in order to protect the public. And type certification is actually one of three certifications that an, uh, an, an OEM and an operator need to go through. The other two being product certification and airworthiness certification. Product certification is uh, the approval by the regulator of the capability of the OEM to manufacture and duplicate under specific rule the specific type design. Airworthiness is the authorization that the regulator gives to actually uh, operate uh, the specific type aircraft. Regulators don't feel they can just treat the new designs like aircraft that have come before them. Well, it depends on the approach that the regulator is following. And I think we can uh, group these approaches into big buckets. Uh, one bucket is the creation of a new set of rules that incorporate pieces of existing rule. The other bucket is the use of the current rule that then get expanded by adding specific items in order to take into account this new technology. And even when initial approval is granted, that doesn't mean the production lines can start flowing right away at the high rates of output that the Evatol pioneers say they will achieve. After type certification is achieved, it means the, the, the regulator has uh, approved that the design is safe to protect the public. Um, the next step is going to be this product certification, and it means that the FAA will actually need to uh, certify the manufacturing facilities. And basically the understanding is that the regulator wants to make sure that every single airplane that comes out is a copy, perfect copy of that specific type that has been certified. The FAA in the US and its European counterpart EASA are taking the lead in the certification process. And the approach they're taking has changed in recent years to be more flexible and to prioritize how to get the most critical safety outcomes. Both regulators spend a significant amount of time with the manufacturers in order to understand how to certify these new vehicles. Uh, and here the approach is divergent. For example, the FAA has decided to use what are called Part 23 certification rule and adapting them to EVITO. And Part 23 rules is basically rules for certification of small aircraft under 19,000 pounds of weight or with less than 19 passengers. And the great thing is these rules have already been updated as of late 2016 from becoming prescriptive to become performance-based, so meeting performance targets. IASA has decided to go down a different route and it has created a new aircraft type uh, and has formulated a comprehensive regulation under what is being called Special Condition VTOL or SC VTOL. 
Um, as of today, IASA regulations are more defined than FAA. And the other part that's interesting is also they're more prescriptive in, uh, than the FAA because they specify a safety level uh, that you will hear 10 to the minus 9, but basically the understanding is it's the same safety level as the airliners you fly every day. When we talk about prescriptive, we're not talking about the fact that the rules might be more or less uh, uh, guidelines as opposed to specific rules. What we're talking about, we're talking about a, a level of safety that the regulator has in mind for a specific aircraft. And in certification, this level of safety really varies according to the different aircraft. So, for example, a little Cessna that is flown privately will be certified to a level of safety that is lower than a 737 on a 777 on an Airbus A320. Um, in this case, the idea is that one regulator has chosen to go with the same safety level as airliners, while the FAA has not yet fewer, completely defined uh, their approach. Evertol aircraft are expected to change air transportation in other areas of the world, apart from just America and Europe. Reciprocal arrangements have always been there between different authorities. For example, IASA, um, FAA, CAAC in China, they all have um, some way of, of accepting someone else's tests. Um, so that basically the idea is that once all of the certification test is done and type certificate have been approved, for example, by the FAA or IASA, the other agency will just do a review as opposed to restart from scratch of these documents. And the goal is to arrive to a certification under multiple cert authorities in a faster amount of time, as opposed to having certified with each one of them. Now, in case of these vehicles, the question arises of how will this happen, considering the fact that right now the FAA and EASA certification rules are not perfectly harmonized. Right now, we've seen uh, on the European side, companies open double certification with both IASA and the FAA. I am not aware of American companies having opened a project with IASA. At least they haven't publicly announced it. Some of the front runners in the Evertol sector are bragging that they've got the whole approval process mapped out and have an assured path to launch flight operations no later than 2024. Some of these companies are talking about the fact that they have defined a certification basis with the uh, regulatory agency. And, and basically, imagine this way as if they have agreed the list of all the items that they will need to go through in order to achieve certification. And, and it's a little bit like basically they've set the, the, the rules of the game. And, and that is very important because setting the rules of the game also allows you to be able to forecast the duration of the game, in this case, the certification. And, and it's also the first step of many different steps that ultimately will lead to inspection authorization of the aircraft as well as FAA or EASA flight tests. And at the very end, after program reviews and after plans and after inspection will lead to that certificate. But some of these companies may find that they and their investors have to be more patient than they'd anticipated. The more novel the aircraft and the technology is using, uh, the longer it will take. Um, and in this case, Evito is the convergence of a lot of new technologies. And we always hear about electric motors. We always hear about distributed propulsion. But let's not forget that it's the first time that an aircraft of this size gets certified with a fully fly-by-wire system. Uh, that means, let's call it an electronic aircraft. Um, what matters the most, rather than how long it takes, is to understand that the certification timing is specified by the regulator. So when you hear air framers or OEMs announcing specific cert dates, consider that as proposed or hoped for dates, because the actual certification date is going to be ultimately decided by the regulatory body. So we need to look at how long is the company is engaged with the regulator. The more the company is engaged with the regulator, the more the regulator feel confident that they have of an understanding of the vehicle, its processes, and all the parts. And the other piece is, always, is also to consider the fact that some of these companies have staffed 
people that are very experienced in certifying aircraft. And so they know how to shepherd this vehicle through certification. They know how to talk to the regulator what the regulator needs. Uh, the black horse is always out there that it might take more time. And, and that, is, that is one of the things that, that we never know, um, as demonstrated by many of the legacy aerospace programs. In some cases, EVATOL aircraft are being developed to operate autonomously, meaning without a pilot on board. This poses a whole new level of complexity and uncertainty for regulators to consider. In this case, um, autonomy will be something that will come in the future. And depending of the voices of the expert in the industry that you hear, some people talk end of the decade, beginning of the next decade. Some people talk 10 years out. Some people talk 20 years out. And the idea is that um, we right now do not know how to certify autonomy the way that we classically certify um, aircraft in and code in, in aerospace. If we take, for example, an example from our cousins uh, in the automotive world, uh, the, the software of the autonomy in the cars is a non-deterministic software that is built through machine learning. And the idea, the, the, it means that at the end, it's the machine that write its own code. Uh, and therefore, uh, at the end, there is no, not a specific expert that can point to what one line of code is doing. Uh, and so this is one of the hurdles uh, that we will need to deal with in, in, in aerospace, even if autonomy is a misnomer for aerospace, because there is already a lot of automation in aerospace. Uh, proof be that a Cat 3B or C autopilot can actually land an aircraft precisely and many times even better than a pilot without any pilot intervention. So there is already a lot of automation in aerospace. It's just this autonomy where the human is completely taken out of the loop is something that will need to be explored more. And recent contentious issues like those arising from two fatal accidents blamed on new flight control technology in Boeing's 737 MAX airliner could mean safety agencies feeling the need to be ultra cautious. One of the other points that are out there um, and we need to consider is, is there going to be an impact from the recent 737 MAX, uh, we'll call it issues, that might change the way that uh, these agencies approach certification from now on. Being these aircraft, the first new and novel aircraft that go through this process after this, this situation. Once a new aircraft has type certification and airworthiness approval, there is still the challenge of establishing the rules under which it will be operated. The expectations is that when it comes to operation, really the operation these, these companies and these vehicles are going to perform are not that different from what is already performed today. Uh, and so, as you mentioned, it will fall under the three buckets of 91, 121, and 135, uh, with the most restrictive being 121, uh, because it's basically an uh, air carrier. So basically it would be the formation of an airline under this operating certificate. So the expectation is that they will fall under already existing operating certification and categories. What I would expect is that there might be the need for additional items that are not included today due to, for example, the use of electric propulsion, charging stations uh, that, that are not clearly spelled out today in these rules. Sergio has been closely involved in the development of new aviation technology for many years. Despite having a crystal clear view of the challenges the EVATOL pioneers face, he firmly believes that new advanced air mobility will make a positive and transformative impact on the sector. AIN's new FutureFlight.Aero platform is drilling down into the detail to make sense of the new aviation technologies and business models. We're posting fresh news day by day. Subscribers get access to exclusive stories about what's happening throughout the industry. And they can also see our extensive database of new aircraft programs and the companies behind them. You can subscribe for free to our weekly newsletter, which brings you highlights from the future flight world every Thursday. Well, we'll be posting more of these videos to explain the context for advanced air mobility. So thanks for watching this one, and please do find more of our coverage at futureflight.aero.